27th of May at the Vitality Stadium, such a tale did come true. A man who believed he could not be beaten, inspired and willed on by 15,000 who shared that dream, supported by a trainer and a team who told anyone who would listen exactly what would happen. But believing it, wishing it, almost isn't enough. You have to go out there and grab it. Seize your moment. Many have shared that same dream and come up short. But seize it, he did. Chris Billum Smith achieved his dream of becoming world champion on that magical night under the stars on the South Coast. By no means a classic, I think we can all admit, but enough to win. And winning is all that matters in this brutal game. Now, he must scale Mount Everest all over again. Champions talk of the first offense being every bit as challenging as winning the belt in the first place. And now, CBS, the gentleman, must produce again. We welcome our challenger, Mateusz Mastanak, back to the UK. A quality, quality operator. A 52-fight veteran with his first attempt at world honors. Dangerous, tough, ambitious, and more than capable of spoiling the early Christmas party in Bournemouth. Make no mistake, from where we are sitting, this is no soft touch first defense, no easy homecoming at the Bournemouth International Center. This is an assignment laced with danger. Huge domestic rivalries and unifications await in 2024, but that all goes up in smoke when the winner or the loser face the reality of December the 11th. Remember, it's a Sunday. Don't let that catch anybody out. Early signs regarding tickets are record-breaking. General sale goes live today. I think I'm right in saying, Ben, that they're live right now. And I suppose my message, Boxer and Ben Shalom's message, Chris will need you once again. If you've been to the Bournemouth International Centre and you've experienced the Chris Billum Smith fight night, you're going to want to go back. So don't wait. Make sure you get tickets. And I suppose you echo that message. Bournemouth International Centre, Bournemouth, those fans, Chris Bill and Smith's going to need them once again. Yeah, we're so excited to be going back to Bournemouth. Every time we go there, you wonder if, it, if this is the last one. Um, that first fight against Isaac Chamberlain was where it really just sparked. And uh, whether it was the barbers, whether it was the local shops, whether it was the local clubs, everyone got behind across the whole South Coast behind this man here. And to see it go from Isaac Chamberlain to Armand Jojai, to then Lawrence Ocoli at this stadium. It's been something to behold. The 15,000 fans came out to see him last time. He possibly is the biggest star now in the cruiserweight division in terms of bums on seats, in terms of eyeballs. And now he gets the chance to really make his name on the global stage. It's, uh, it's been an unbelievable journey. The tickets have gone even better than previous. We could have sold out in pre-sale all at once. The general sale is today. Um, but what a night it will be on December the 10th. And he faces Matthias Masternak, who has been waiting for this moment as well and has been quietly doing, going about his business since he fought Dorticus and, and lost narrowly. And this is his big moment. And so a huge night for Chris, another huge test, as you say, another mountain to climb. But what a story we've got here and a, a local boy becoming a global superstar. And that's what I believe will happen on December 10th. Let me just introduce the top table formally. We've got star trainer Shane McGuigan, of course, the champion with his belt in front of him, Chris Billum Smith, Ben Shalom, uh, boxer promoter, and our visitors from Poland, Darius Skop, who's going to help translate, and the challenger, Mateusz Masternak. Uh, Chris, I will come to you first as champion Sunday. So you're not going to have your, your Sundays off. It's not a Saturday night in Bournemouth. It's a Sunday, but a chance for a homecoming but a very tough first defence. I'm sure you're under no illusions that this is a very, very tough night that awaits. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's a, for me, it's the toughest test of my career to date. I've, stylistically, I've watched uh, Mateusz box over the years. I remember watching him against Tony Bellew for the European title in a, what was a nip and tuck fight. Um, the last round really edged it for Tony because um, he had a really good finish in the last sort of half of the round. Um, and he's, he, he does everything very, very well. He's the most rounded fighter I would have faced by a long stretch. You know, he hasn't shown any, you know, massive weaknesses in areas. He does everything very, very, very well. Um, so for me, toughest fight to date for sure. 
from what you've seen, you know, I think Sky Sports viewers and UK fans, we go back as far as the Tony Bellew European title fight. I think the general consensus, and I hope it, it isn't an insult to Mateus, but he's very well-rounded, does everything well. There are no obvious weaknesses, a lot like yourself. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think stylistically we're, we're similar in a, in, a, in a lot of areas, um, and that's why it makes for a fantastic fight for for the fans' perspective. Uh, if I was just a fan watching this fight, I'd be licking my lips. Um, for me, I need to try and make it as easy a fight as possible. Um, you know, I, it, you can't be. Do you do easy fights though? <laughs> Apparently not. Um, you know, it's it's going to be an entertaining fight. Our styles will clash really, really well, and I think. Um, I think it's it, it can't it can't be a bad fight. You've boxed all over, and uh, you know you look like someone that's enjoyed playing a trade around the country. But the BIC, the Bournemouth International Centre, I don't know. It just seems to bring something extra out of you. Uh, you know, and I'm even talking about the Jojai fight, which which very nearly tripped you up, but still a special night. I don't think the Sky Sports cameras we haven't had a bad night down there. And it's just, an, I don't know if it's the acoustics, I don't know if it's the fans, I don't know if it's you. It just seems to lend itself to a little bit of chaos and excitement. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that arena holds the noise so well. And then you stick, you know, 3,000 AFC Bournemouth fans in there that, that, have, uh, that sing their hearts out. And uh, it, it just creates a phenomenal atmosphere. And I've said it time and time again, that I got into the sport because of watching my mate box and the atmosphere that was there for him. And there was 20 of us. And now I've got, you know, well, I had last time out, I had, you know, 15,000 people there trying to my name. It was an, an honour. And I know the BIC holds the sound even better than, than the stadium would. So it feels like there's, you know, 10 times that in there. And um, I'm so fortunate to have that, the fan base I do. Um, and it, yeah, it spurs me on and it motivates me. Uh, we have talked about it openly before, but I'm not sure if everybody will know the story. It's one for Ben and for you, Chris. But... The date is an interesting one. I think I speak for the whole broadcasting landscape and the, the, the major promoters in the UK at the moment that scheduling is a, is a real migraine. Um, but there's also some thought gone into this. Bournemouth fans, football fans, AFC Bournemouth, you want them there. Uh, but Saturday's not an ideal day if you, know, you want to go and watch Bournemouth. So you've moved to the Sunday to accommodate those fans as well. Yeah, I mean, we, we obviously there was a few dates chucked around and I said we sort of, said me, and, me and Ben and the team were having a chat and I said, can't really do do it when Bournemouth are away, especially as the day before they're away in Manchester. Um, and I think everyone agreed with that and it made sense. So um, it's the best deal for everyone, the best for me, because I get my fans there. It's the best for, for the, the cameras, the noise, the atmosphere, and it's the best for the fans because they can go and watch the football on the Saturday, um, come back on the Sunday and still have something to look forward to Sunday night. Winning a world title should be hard, and that was a real grueler against Lawrence Acoli. Now you've got it. Uh, how determined are you, and how important is it to you that you keep hold of it for a long reign? That it isn't just uh, one one great night. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I I don't want to be a flash in the pan. I, I've won won the world title, and um, you know, I I never want to let it go. So um, I'm so motivated. I'm more motivated than than ever before. It the there's a different type of motivation in now because you're not just chasing something. You're trying to hold on to something and someone's trying to take something that's yours. And, um, you know, as a, as a father, that sort of is, is, is like my, uh, my second child now. So, uh, that, that sort of honor I have of holding the belt, um, I want to keep. So, uh, hugely motivated. It'll be a question for Shane in a minute and, uh, maybe one for your wife, Mia, but do you think being world champions changed you at all? <laughs> um, you'll have to ask them. They, they'll say abs, but uh, they, they keep winding me up saying that I've changed because because he gets a lot of free stuff these days. You know? Although Shane, <laughs> although Shane, I am told, uh, and I'm sure I'm breaching a couple of Ofcom regulations, but he hasn't got a, a suit sponsor. That is off the rack. So I think there's a there's a uh, there's a deal to be made there for a tailor in Bournemouth. Yeah. Any 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 suit sponsors want to get on board? Feel free. Um, no, it's. Uh, I don't feel like life's changed too much. I get noticed a bit more in, in, in Bournemouth. Um, I mean, Sunday morning, I had the little man. Overnight Saturday, my Mia was out. And, uh, you know, I changed two nappies before 7 o'clock in the morning. So, for me, I don't feel like life's changed too much. Yeah, it's all about the glamour. Let me come over to Mateus Masternak, uh, our challenger. Um, welcome. 
How excited are you to be back here in the UK in the chance to fight Chris Billum Smith for a world title? What does that mean to you? Witamy Ciebie z powrotem tutaj. Jak ekscytujący się czujesz? Co znaczy dla Ciebie walka z Chrisem Billem Smithem? Eee, witam serdecznie. Bardzo jest miło tutaj gościć e, po raz drugi. Jest to dla mnie wyjątkowy czas, wyjątkowy dzień, wyjątkowy kamp, dlatego że 17 lat podążam drogą niełatwą przez zwycięstwa, przez porażki od Johannesburga poprzez Londyn, Moskwę, Stany Zjednoczone i wiele innych krajów. I w końcu doczekałem się dnia, w którym będę mógł spełnić moje i polskich fanów marzenia. Welcome everybody. From 17 years I'll wait for this time when I can have an opportunity to get a title. During these 17 years I was winning, I was losing, I've had like a tough uh, fight, but now is the time when I can uh, get my dreams for myself and for my fans and for Poland too. There's a saying here, I have no idea if it translates, but they say good things come to those who wait. Yes, uh, he's patient enough, he was, uh, he's waited for this um, time for a long time, so he's ready to take a belt. What do you know about Chris Billam Smith and what sort of fight are you predicting against him? Co wiesz o Chrisie Billam Smithie i jak przewidujesz walkę z nim? W ostatnim pojedynku Chris pokazał, że jest pięściarzem, który w ringu myśli, który wybiera bardzo dobrą taktykę, odpowiedni styl. Pokazał, że jest pięściarzem prawie kompletnym. Więc na pewno czeka mnie trudne zadanie, ale będzie również musiał zmierzyć się z moim doświadczeniem, z moim stylem, a to nie jest łatwe. Wielu się o tym przekonało, więc jestem bardzo zadowolony z tego, że w końcu walczę o mistrzostwo świata i myślę, że wszyscy kibice w Bormów będą bardzo zadowoleni, że przed pojedynkiem, że jestem pretendentem, ale obawiam się, że pojedynku, po pojedynku już nie będą tak szczęśliwi. In his last fight, Chris uh, showed his uh, strong will. He showed as well that he can uh, change the game plan. He's a tough opponent, but he has to challenge against my experience, my toughness. And after the final bell, uh, I'm going to make happy everybody around. You said experience and toughness, um, but what does Mateusz? What do you think that you do better than Chris? Doświadczenie i twardość, ale co myślisz, że lepiej, że robisz lepiej niż Chris? Sam nie wiem. Uh, well, so it's hard to say what he's going to do better than Chris. Obviously, it's our game plan and our tactic, uh, and we're going to keep it for ourselves. Nigdy, nigdy nie myślę o tym, co ja robię lepiej od uh, rywala. Zawsze staram się skupić na swoich gatutach, o których uh, nie chcę mówić. Uh, wydaje mi się, że jestem zawodnikiem dosyć sprytnym i inteligentnym. I głęboko jestem przekonany, że w tym pojedynku znajdę na Chris'a sposób. I never think what I can do better than my opponent. Uh, I always uh, concentrate on myself. And I think in this uh, fight, I'm going to find a way uh, just to prove it. Are you expecting a hostile crowd? Do you welcome a hostile crowd? Tak, dostałem już wiele, wiele print screenów, że, że właśnie mają bilety i, 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 i będą mnie dopingować. Dostałem też wiadomość, że w tamtych okolicach jest około 15 tysięcy polskiej Polonii, więc na pewno będzie trochę też kibiców z Polski. Natomiast wiadomo, że to będzie mniejszość na sali, bo jednak walka jest na ziemi mistrza.
I got a lot of messages uh, from my fans. I know there are about 15,000 Polish community over there, so I know they're going to support me. I know as well that I'm going to fight on the uh, Chris Bilam Smith territory, so I expect uh, like a big crowd behind him, but uh, I'm ready for it. Okay, for now, thank you. Let's bring in Shane McGuigan. I think um, the message through all of this has been if you were coming here today to expect tables and chairs and trash talking, you're probably not going to get it from two very well-rounded season pros. And I'll repeat what I said at the start. I think those in the trade recognize this as a real tough, hard, um, dangerous first defense against Mateusz Masnak. How highly do you rate him? Oh, very highly. Um, I think, you know, he's um, extremely seasoned. He's, he's a very good all-rounder, takes a fantastic shot, got a good work rate as well, um, and got decent power as well. So... This is a, a typical scenario of you know winning against Lawrence Sokoli at, by all means and looking good later. And this is going to be the fight that you look good against. It's going to be a fight that's a, an extremely exciting fight whilst it lasts. Um, you know, I can see you know the two of them hurting each other throughout the fight, but you know I don't think he's boxed anyone as uh, as quick in terms of the just short range combinations that, that Chris does. I think you know. He's incredibly tough. He's boxed uh, Dortikus. He's boxed Bellu, big one-punch knockout artist. You know, and they, they, they're quite not slow, but they got good timing. Whereas Chris, he, he surprises you. And I think you know, it's one of those fights that it's going to be edge of your seat. And same thing for for you know, Chris with Masternik. You know, it's going to be he does things as he just said. He's probably the most well-rounded fighter he, he's boxed. You know, he, but he can he's dangerous at all ranges. Um, and it's just going to be a fantastic fight. It's a bit lazy of us, like with the headlines, but the way that you just described Masternak there, a lot of the same terminology you could use for Chris Billum Smith. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, they 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 both probably rely on their toughness a little bit too much, but for for the viewers, you're in for a treat. Yeah, I make you right, Ben Shalom. Um, there's no secret of the the big fights that are sort of looming on the horizon for Chris. Um, stadium is is there again in the summer, I think. Uh, I hope I'm over spoke too soon but I think it's you know it's there it's a carrot that's being dangled um you've got the Akoli rematch we know that Richard Riak is also sort of lurking um all of that goes away yeah it's difficult because we saw what happened on Saturday um and you can't overlook anyone but particularly a guy as experienced as Mateus Masternak I think this is as tough a fight as Lawrence Akoli as tough a fight as Richard Riak and uh just all I would say is for anyone who hasn't experienced a night in Bournemouth that night at the Brit at the Bournemouth International Centre. It's one of the best experiences in British boxing, and this is a 50 fight, 50 50 fight, and this is a fight that Chris Billen Smith's going to have to put everything into. It's going to be a huge night on December the 10th. I don't want to look beyond it. I think it would be stupid for Chris to look beyond it. Masternak is certainly not looking beyond it. This is his night. He 100%. I speak to his promoters a fair bit at KO Promotions. This is their moment. For them, this is their night. This is the night that they feel they're going to become a world champion. Anything beyond this is a bonus. This is a, this is a true 50-50. And obviously, fingers crossed, Chris Billum smith will come through. But he's going to have to be at his very, very, very best. And without alienating other fan bases, have you got a little bit of a soft spot and Boxer a bit of a soft spot for that Bournemouth crowd? Because I think when you decided to take Boxer down there on the beach and Sky Sports cameras, I don't know... If truly everyone, Chris, you're looking at me like you want to kill me, like you probably did believe it. Yeah. But did you think it would lead to this, you know, another sold out night against Joe Jai, a sold out stadium, um, back again for a first defence? It's kind of lent itself to the boxer banner a little bit. I think so. I, I don't think there's another sport like boxing that can take a local town or a local city the way it does and just bring everyone together. That's what it's done in Bournemouth. It literally has put it on the map. Chris Billen Smith is the poster boy of the town now. Everyone comes out every time he goes there. To be going back a fourth time is, is pretty incredible. I hope we can go back more. I hope we go back to the stadium in May again. But yeah, of course, this is a, it's been a special journey. Hopefully one that will continue for many more years, but not looking beyond December the 10th. Okay, well, we can wrap this up, but I will encourage both fighters to address each other. I don't know if this is going to work with the language barrier, but Chris, have you got a, a final message for Matthias? No, I, 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 res I respect you. Um, thank you for, for taking the fight. I know it's a huge opportunity and um, all the best in training camp. I'll let you relay that. Uh, 
And do you have a, a message for Chris? Uh, it's a tough question. <laughs> it's a tough one, guys. Okay. Box, uh, box is a very difficult sport. Wielu wielkich wojowników poświęciło życie i zdrowie, więc życzę sobie i Krysowi, żeby ten pojedynek był very, very special. Natomiast żebyśmy kolejnego dnia mogli patrzeć na swoje rodziny i cieszyć się życiem. I think boxing is a tough sport. A lot of fighters sacrifices um, uh, their life uh, for this sport. I wish Chris uh, just we could uh, have a happy time with our families after the, buy, the fight. Yeah, very good message. Okay, we're going to pause now for heads heads. If everyone just stays down at the front and you can all get a chance to get your heads head, we're going to be in front there. And remember, if you want your tickets, go online because they're going to go quickly. But we'll break now and one-on-ones will be available afterwards with everyone. <laughs>